Hello world, YouTube world, that is, all ten of you, thank you for tuning in to episode seven of uh, the Volganos Translations podcast, a Monster Hunter themed podcast. Uh, I took last week off, I do not apologize for that, I really had nothing to talk about, um, just been, you know, farming G-rank and stuff, and it, 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 you know, it's, it's the same thing over and over again, but it's still super exciting, but I don't really have much to report based off of that, you know, and um now, what'd you do this week? Huh? I killed things. Cool. Did you make anything? Yeah, tons of stuff. Cool. All right. Good talk. Whatever. So, I wasn't going to do a podcast this week even, um, but then one of my friends was like, hey, you should talk about this, insect glaives, which is what we're talking about today, um, because they don't really understand them. They don't really know if they should start focusing some of the materials to make some of them, if it's really worth it or not, and so... I was like, that's a great idea. Like, I can talk about that. I'm not a pro at them by any means necessary, and there's going to be tons of things in here that you're probably going to disagree with, but fuck you. This is my podcast. Um, so I decided that from here on out, uh, unless something major comes along or whatever, like, you know, the fucking capture card being released and me actually able to do that, capture my 3DS, which it hasn't, and we're still in progress. Sorry. Going to be a while. Um... I'm going to uh, talk about a weapon each week, so hopefully it won't be super long. We'll, we'll see. This, this insect glaive is going to be a little bit longer than some of the other ones, just because there's a lot that goes into it, and it's a new weapon. Uh, so let's jump right into it right away anyway, okay? So the insect glaive, what is it? Well, it's really two weapons in one. Primarily, it's like a, a double volg or like a, a, a staff that you swing around, right? Um, it's got like, well, it's pretty much got one end you attack with, but nonetheless, you know, it's, it's cool. It's got a staff. Do tons of attacks with it. Um, and you can do bunny hops with it, fly into the air with it. It's part of the new mechanic in Monster Hunter 4 where you can mount monsters jump on their backs. It's basically the weapon that does that. It is the weapon that mounts monsters, pretty much, because you can get yourself into the air easily um, by yourself, and you can do attacks in the air, right? So it works pretty much like most weapons. It's got combos off the X and the A, um, buttons or triangle and circle, however you want to think about it, and uh, it... You know, it's at, at first glance it seems complicated, but really it's it's not. It's just got its own combos, and it's just it's a little f- bit of a flashy weapon. It just looks really flashy. The really interesting thing about it is the kinsect portion, the bug you have on your right side. Now the bug changes from time to time, right? When you upgrade it, um, and the bugs can look really cool, much like any of the other weapons and armor in the game, with a few exceptions, of course. Uh, the kinsect can look really awesome. Uh, I, don't, I really haven't seen one that does not look awesome, though. Honestly, like, all the bugs look like meaty, big, fucking, like, punch brawler bugs or, like, these dainty little butterflies that are, like, sick-looking still with all these random-ass colors and stuff. But it's, it's you know, it's still awesome. Um, So when you use the Kinsect in, in battle, it's got a whole separate thing that works with the glaive part of the weapon, right? And I wish I could show you this, guys, but, you know, there's tons of videos out there just go look them up. You know, this is something for listening to, right? Um, so the Kinsect, you can send it out uh, with R and X. It takes me a little bit to think about those button combinations, so I'm used to saying, like, R and, like, triangle. So bear with me here. Um, R and X, you can send it out by holding R first and then X to send it out. Um, R, holding R by itself just sort of aims where you're going to send it. And um, you send it out, and it can hit monster's parts. And depending on where it hits the monster... Uh, whatever monster you're facing, it can take up four different types of essences or color juices, whatever you want to call it. it sounds kind of dirty. Um, the primary ones are red, uh, orange, and white, and you can also get green. Green quite simply just heals you, right? Um, so when you get that essence extracted, when it hits the monster, it'll show in the top left corner a little bug thing what color it has, and you can pull it back to you by holding R and hitting circle, or R and A, excuse me, C, did it already. So R and A um, will pull the bug back to you, and it'll give you that essence. Now, each essence does a different thing. So red gives you an attack boost. It gives you, like, an attack up. And it also does something very important, which is gives you more attacks. It doubles, it literally doubles the amount of time, the amounts of time you hit during your attacks, Right? Also makes all of your combos extremely flashy and look terribly complicated. They're not. You hit one button and you attack like six times. It's goddamn ridiculous. Slight exaggeration. Um, orange gives you a defense boost um, and slightly more stability. Stability, I mean, like, ability to get tripped by other people. It does seems to have some small effect like that, right? 
Um, and then white gives you movement speed up and uh, higher jumping capabilities, which is fantastic in itself right there, right? Uh, higher jumps just flat out when you're mounting monsters is just better because they're flying in the air. You can meet them right up there. Oh, you're flying? Ha <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Here I am, bitches. Um, white also is something very important. It's a catalyst, right? So if you have either red or orange or both, um, white will enhance the effects of everything. So you get more of an attack boost. Uh, you don't get more attacks, whatever, but you get more of an attack boost. You get more of a defense boost, etc. You can also get all three. That's sort of like the trifecta, and you're like an unstoppable force then or whatever. Um, the problem is that all of those only last so long, right? Like maximum like a minute, unless you have certain abilities we'll get to later and they can last like two minutes or three minutes something like that which is really good but it doesn't last terribly long so you have to comment keep part of the whole thing of using insect glaives you have to keep grabbing those extracts right you have to keep sending your bug out and getting those the, the good thing is though the bug does do a damage um a little bit of damage not much really i wouldn't worry about it i wouldn't focus on it because it like 99 percent of your damage is going to be done through the glaive part right um so once you kind of get that you understand the difference or the, the the balance between the two. You can definitely start using the insect glaive a lot better. You know, first thing you want to do when you go into a battle, get your extracts going, right? Especially that red one. That red is super important because you just get so many more. You do so much more damage that just you get so many more attacks. Period with it. So red is the first you want to get. And usually, that's the monsters' heads, right? So it's really easy to get when you first run into the room because they just scream at you, and you just run up there and just straight at it, boom, right? Um, or you can alternatively, you can mark them by holding down R and letting go. It'll shoot a little marker, <clears throat> which will attach to the monster. And whenever you send your bug out, it'll fly right at that marker, which only lasts so long, 30 seconds or something. Uh, normally, when you shoot the bug out, it just goes out in the direction that your character is facing, not the direction of the camera, the way your character is facing, right? So some of the... Um, combos you're going to want to use with the insect glaive um and it's the same when you have your extracts the red extract and when you don't right it's just you do more attacks when you have the, when you have the red one uh, some some combos you're going to want to use are is pretty much just um x x a repeated right and that does two like a forward slash like a backward slash and then like a, a side sweeping slash you can continue in the combo it's like one of those infinite combos right uh, the problem with that one um is that it's really good. It reaches high high up to for tails or anything. You do multiple hits with the red. It's it's great. The problem is that the insect glaive is much like a longsword and it trips people very easily. So when you do the A attack, it's like a big side swiping attack, right? At least I think that's the one it is. But the whole combo is somewhere in there. And so you really tend to trip a lot of people using it. Um, so what I like to do is just do uh, three X's in a row, just X, X, X. And that way no one gets tripped. Yes, you your attacks isn't as, aren't as smooth. You kind of do less attacks, maybe less damage even, but you're going to do more damage in a group if everyone can get their fucking attacks in without you goddamn tripping them, right? So three X is what I do uh, if I'm around a lot of people going for like a small target, like a tail or something. Otherwise, it's just X, X, A, and I do that over and over again. Um, to start the combo, you can go with A and then X, X, A, and then repeat it because A is a nice lunge forward when you have your glaive out. Um, otherwise, if you don't have your glaive out, just an X will do the same lunge attack and go into there. Uh, at any point in time, pretty much, too, you can go into a jumping attack, which is R and X, which, like, slingshots you up in the air. And again, with the white essence, you have more height when you do that, right? Uh, so that's really good, too, because you can go right into, like, a combo and then into a mount uh, right after that and keep it going. Um, it, it's definitely a very fluid weapon, uh, very flashy, but again, it, it tends to trip people a lot. So you got to be careful when you use it, you know, what combos you're actually doing with it. And there are a bunch of other side attacks too, that you can kind of go into there. Some finisher combos, XXA, A is a good finisher combo. Um, I like to, cause you out of the way. Um, but I really like the XXA one because, or the XXX one, because it doesn't move you around too much. A lot of the attacks move you forward and backward quite a bit, which can move you off target, but that one doesn't seem to do it. It still does a little bit, but that one doesn't seem to do it as much. Um, you can also do like a backward flip. I think it's XXA and back. I think it is maybe, or maybe it's X and then a back, maybe it is just like normal X and then backflip with an A. Um, I forget which one it is. You try it out and find it for him. But you'll do a backflip attack where it doesn't attack and um, moves you backwards 
and that kind of puts you in more position recent, uh, a lot better because normally a lot of attacks move you forward just away from things. So keep that in mind too. I think it's I think it is just a jab X and then A backwards to get you kind of sort of back in position, which is really nice to use. Um, so when do you use the Insect Glaive? Uh, you know, Monster Hunter essentially is two portions, solo and group, solo and multiplayer. Um, and I found that in the solo use, and again, this is obviously going to probably vary for, uh, vary for uh, professional, like professional, uh, Insect Glaive users, but I don't really like using it for solo. And this is why. It's a very strong weapon, right? Especially with the attack boost when you get all your essences built up, right? It's got a lot of um, destruction capability because it's got high range, you know, a very wide range of attack motions there. So you can hit a lot of things, tails high up in the air and stuff like that. Um, it's also very focused. You can close distance very well. But none of that really means anything if half the time you're spending trying to mount a monster, which isn't doing a whole lot of damage, and you have to set yourself up very, you know, in a specific place and location for it and constantly, you know, putting yourself at risk because the whole time you're in the air, you can't really dodge. You're completely open. So if the monster doesn't attack, you, you're you fucked. You probably won't land your hit off. And if you do, it's probably not going to do enough damage to mount, right? You won't get both hits if you have the red attack. You only get the one. Um, and the whole time you're trying to grab essences to actually be useful as an insect glaive user can take a lot of time. Once you get better at it, like as I've noticed myself, I've gotten a lot better with it, um, I can get essences pretty quickly. Well under, you know, 10 seconds probably, 10, 20 seconds. But even that... You're not attacking. You're constantly running around, and if you miss an essence once, like you need that white to complete your triple or whatever, or an orange, or you can't get your red for some goddamn reason, then you're just wasting time, right? It, especially if you don't have if you don't have red, you can't keep that one going. Like with certain monsters, it's really hard for that to hit get red. It's only like on their head, and their head's really small or something. Um, it's you know sometimes it's just really difficult to do that by yourself when the monsters only focus on you. You can't get the proper angle. The cats can help with that, but you know. Sometimes a monster is just really focused on you. So for soloing, I found that I've used a, a multitude of different weapons, and Insight Glaive is one of my lower times, for sure, just because, again, you spend so much time trying to make yourself decent and trying to set yourself up uh, for, like, a mount that it just doesn't equate to do enough damage in enough time. If you're trying to break parts and stuff, yeah, it can be useful, but you have to think about something else, too, is when you mount, when you're the mountee, mount, mountee, ah, Canada, I, that was Australian. I'm awesome. I can do any accent. Um, when you're mounting a monster, right, and you topple it, really good. The monster's really open to a bunch of attacks, okay? Like, you know, you can get the tail, you can attack the head, you can break the wings, you can go for the claws, you can go pretty much anywhere because it sits down for so long. The problem is when you dismount, everyone else gets those opportunities. You don't. You miss out on about at least a third of the attacking time because by the time it's fallen and hit the ground and it started shaking around at least a third, nearing a half of the time that it's down on the ground, you're still trying to get up. Your weapon's put away, so at least you can run over to it. But remember, you always dismount in front of the monster. So if you're trying to go for the tail, by the time you get around to that tail, you can only get one good combo in before it gets all the way back up, right? So that's really not worth it. I see a lot of people, when they do insect glaze, will dismount and just go for essences. And I'm like, okay, that's fine too if you want to, you know, like wings are the only place that gives like a white essence or something. Usually not the case, but nonetheless, then you can get that too. But that whole time that you dismounted, you took time to mount, which you're not doing a lot of damage, and then dismount line on the ground, and you're just grabbing essences, you're not doing much damage, right? That's why I think insect glaze is better used for a group because... You don't have to spend with the essences, right? Sending your kinsect out to grab stuff. You're not spending that time attacking so someone else can compensate for that, right? And also, when you're mounting and you dismount, they can be exactly where they need to be to break something, right? Basically, what I say is if the, the person who's mounting, they just go for the head. Everyone else goes for whatever. Obviously, you're trying to break the horns, whatever you have. Hammer user, sure, sit there for the head. But if you're trying to get the tail, mounty, the, the mountee... The dismounter, whatever, shouldn't have to run around to the tail because it's just not worth it. Focus on another part, right? And if you have those other people there, in two dismounts, you can break everything, right? And literally everything on a monster, you, you can do it with two dismounts, and the monster just lying there if everyone knows what to go for. But you only get that in a group, right? So it's it's almost like the, the insect glaive is more of a tool, um, especially for more difficult monsters to sort of give everyone a break to catch up, you know, because the whole time that they're they're up there, uh, the insect leave is mounting, um, and an attack stabbing the hell out of their back, everyone else can, you know, 
recuperate themselves, heal themselves up, take time for that. So it just seems like if you're doing it by yourself, it's almost a waste of time. Like the whole point of the weapon is to mount monsters, and if you're doing it by yourself, you, you can't really utilize it to its fullest. You know, you you really can't. So definitely recommend it for uh, for group use. Um, and you know, you can do it for solo, depending on if if you like it or not. But I feel like there's better if you're going for time and everything. Um, which most of us are, because some of those quests take a while, I definitely recommend some other weapon classes to use instead of Insect Glaive. But in a group, fantastic. Um, so what sort of Insect Glaives and Kinsects can you make? Because remember, when you upgrade a Glaive, you're also upgrading its Kinsect primarily, and that can vary a lot. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, as far as the Glaive goes, I like a balance. It's one of those weapons that attacks pretty quickly, so but it's still got a high attack, damp or attack ratio, right? Um... So as far as damage to element, because that's usually the conundrum is, oh, do I pick raw damage or do I pick an elemental damage? So it's like, well, if it was something like hammer or a great sword, you know, something like that, I would go with just raw, you know, pick raw over element. Um, and that's my personal opinion. But with insect glaives, I, I definitely have to see a balance. If you sacrifice, you know, 30 raw for like, you know, 30 element, well, that's a bit. That's a big jump in element right there for quite a little, little bit of loss. If you're looking at a, you know, a hundred hundred loss of raw for like thirty element, well, you know, it depends. You look at the sharpness, look at the affinity, something like that, you know. Um, but definitely, I think a balance. If I am gonna pick one though, probably gonna say damage first. If you're looking like over fifty difference of element, or you know, over a hundred and fifty difference of raw, mm, you're probably gonna want to go with that raw. Um, just just because of you know the the purpose of it you're trying to break parts and stuff like that better suited to raw it just seems to fit more to me my personal opinion right with attack frequency and everything um and the other part is the kinsect part what do you pick for the kinsect because like i said the bugs change as you level them up they're very different bugs not only by look but also by qualities and skills the bugs actually get their own skills, right? Those skills include, uh, like, attack up, defense up, speed, stamina. Actually, I don't think there's defense, but speed, stamina. Um, and then the best one, I think, um, and I think it's well agreed, is the extract and affinity extend, right? Um, and that basically is, so the extracts you collect, the essences you collect with your kinsect last longer, which is what you want because you can spend less time using that. It's just better, right? So there's a few things when you need to think about when you go to upgrade them. You use upgrade them using nectar, right? And you've seen around it's literally the only time you use nectar in the entire game is for upgrading kinsects, uh, as far as I know at least. Whatever mystery why they even have it in the game. Um, get to that in a second. Actually, more like ten minutes. Um, so you put these these nectars. They have different values, right? It might be like power nectar plus. So power it's going to add like one power minus one speed and like minus one fire or something right um so you can either boost choose to boost power speed stamina or any of the elements fire dragon water thunder ice right and you might think okay well what do i want to go for well if i'm making like an elemental glaive maybe i want to go with that element yeah absolutely right you could be making a fire glaive you might want to stick to like a fire insect so you're not bringing like a water to like a monster that's not weak to water you know something like that it just doesn't really make that sense or you can think of it the other way not really but you can think of it the other way if okay well i'm doing multiple monster quests and my fire and water insect glaive because some monsters weak to fire some weak to water that's probably the worst excuse i've ever heard if you're going to do that because honestly the, the insect doesn't do enough damage you're not exclusively attacking with it for it to make any sense to use water so if you can do anything don't split up the elements but it is what it is um or you can sort of gear it to be sort of ignore the elements and focus more so on the power, speed, stamina, right? So those three are really the core of the Kinsect because, again, you're not doing a whole lot of damage with it. You're not really focusing on it. It's not your main method of attack, so you shouldn't put a whole lot of, you know, focus on doing damage with it, which is basically the whole focus of elements. Elements do damage. You don't really care about damage with this thing, so don't worry about it. So I personally recommend ignoring all elemental stuff in there, right? Uh, it, it's too crazy trying to trying to upgrade it with that path anyway because certain elements subtract from other elements you have to have them so high it's you know it's it's just not not worth trying to deal with that puzzle of oh I need to add more thunder but in order to do that I need to add more ice first 
Well, in order to add more ice, I have to add more fire. Okay, here we go. And all of a sudden, you're just messing your whole Kinsect up uh, because there's only a certain there's a certain point when it stops, and you stop adding stats to it. And that is essentially what you're doing is you're adding these stats to these Kinsects, right? So I recommend focusing on the power, stamina, speed sort of aspect of it, and you can go about it, you know, many ways. What how your play style is, but really in the end. You're focusing on two things, power and speed, right? Stamina, the way I understand it, is that's how long your kinsect, your bug, can stay away from you um, before it has to return to you. Well, that's fine and well, you know, have more stamina means it can stay out longer. But really, to me, I need that bug to go out there, grab the extract, and come right back and give it to me. I don't need it to sit out there waiting for me to give it a direction because, to be honest, if it's sitting out there, I don't know where the fuck it's at. If I'm going to direct it somewhere, I don't know what angle it's coming from. It's definitely not going to hit what I want, where I want to hit it. So I don't really care about stamina. Have it go out there and come back and just give me the essences, which means speed, right? Definitely want, like, so much freaking speed because the quicker that shit happens, the quicker I can get to attacking and doing actual damage and helping, right? And the other part is if I'm not caring about stamina, might as well worry about power. I can focus on at least two things right there, right? Um, and you know, power that, that makes it a little more useful because I have seen it. I've done it myself, where you can actually stun monsters with a blunt. Because uh, there's two types of insects: blunt or cutting insect. Uh, you can also cut tails with it. You know, you can do all sorts of stuff with it. I've tripped monsters with just using the insect before. So more power would definitely be you know welcome, especially since they're sort of weak as it is. So really, you want to upgrade power and speed, right? That that's that's what we come down to. You don't want to worry about elements. Stamina is practically useless in the way you should play insect glaive at least so how do we get that how do we maximize an a insect insect glaive to have the best power and speed ratio we can right well i don't fucking know at least i didn't until i watched gaijin hunter's guide to tell you how to how to make it right and he took it was like nine minutes to explain to you how to upgrade a, a Kinsect, any kinsect, right? Because they all sort of upgrade along the same path um, to get to get to the best power and speed setup. So, just for a quick understanding of what before we get into it, it's going to take like three minutes once we get into it, how to do it, um, how it works. So, these kinsects are based on point values. Everything um, starts at zero, with the exception of power, speed, and stamina. Those start at uh, sixty, and you can't go beneath sixty. Like I said, the nectars add stats. So you add one power minus some other things, you add one power. You add so many points, you get like an, an ability, whatever. You get a direction, right? So you add so much power, you get the option to upgrade to another a certain type of bug. You add so much stamina, you get an option to upgrade to another certain type of bug, right? You hit these certain thresholds of power, stamina, speed, and overall number of points, just total used anywhere, anywhere points, you can upgrade to certain bugs, right? So the best the best quote unquote with the best power and speed and ability again we're looking really for ability here which is the best one that i think and probably everyone else is the extract and affinity boost increase extend evade whatever um up so you, you your essences last longer is what it is your essences last longer that's probably the the, the best thing you can look for in a kinsect right you don't need to tack up you don't need, you know, the speed up is nice, but you don't really need it because if you put enough speed in it, you don't need to worry about it. But you need that extract to last longer. So in order to do that, power, speed, and stamina all have to be at, like, 96 points by a certain level. Okay? So here's how you do that, right? This is what Gaijin Hunter took 9 to 11, 15, I think it was like 9 minutes, to explain how to do. All you need are power plus, speed plus, and stamina plus nectars. You can buy them all at the YCM, Right? pretty cheap if you just stock up on them whenever you see them basically and you need a fuck ton of them so just stock up on one you see them you need at least like 50 of each probably right first thing you're going to do you're going to use power plus to get all the way up to level four that's when you're going to find your first um upgrade split right it's going to you're going to have many different bugs it's going to max out your power at this point at the end of level three going on to level four we'll have 87 points okay you're going to pick the top bug, the one that goes with attack, okay? Almost always, until the very last time, you're going to pick the top bug whenever it splits off. Once you get that, to go, once you're at level 4, you're going to do 3 more power plus, okay? Just regular plus 1 powers um, to get to power 96, right? There's your 96 for power. Fantastic. 
Now, everything else from here on out is going to be speed pluses to get to 96 points. That'll happen at about level 7. You're going to pick the top bug again when it splits off. Okay? Great. After that, you're at level you're level 7, right? So you need to go to speed up. Again, the same ones, just speed plus 1, until you get to 114 points. Until on the far left, it says 114. Okay? After that, you're going to add stamina which gets you to 96. This will also bring you to level 10. The level 10 is where everything should be at level or 96 points, whatever, and you get to pick your last bug differentiation. Apparently, the best one is there. I have not made one to that point yet because I don't have the materials. One's close. Uh, I've been spending shit on other stuff. But once you get there to level 10 and everything's at 96, you'll have the option to pick the Extend Extract Affinity Up. And that's the one... Um, whatever bug it is, I think it's one of the bottom options typically, but you'll look at it when you look at the skills. It's very obvious. It's extend extract and affinity up. Um, that's one that makes everything last longer. Once you get to level 10, you can, everything after that, there's no more branching. You just get to choose how your consect um, stats play out. So if you want max speed, put a bunch of speed up to 150 to max it out. Okay? After that, um, According to Gai Jin, and from what I've seen, it probably holds true because it's just part of the game, uh, you need to add power plus plus, which I think adds like three or five power um, until the, it won't take any more nectar at all. Like this will max it out from level 11 and 12. 12 is max. Um, and you get power plus pluses from the uh, rare or just, you know, any expeditions in G rank. You'll find them on the little pine cones on the ground. So, again, to recap, power right to 87 points. Then three more to 96. Then you do speed until 114, and then you do stamina to 96, and then you pick the best bug, maxed out with speed, and then power plus plus. And then you have, quote unquote, the best insect glaive in the game, I guess, with the most speed and power, which is really all you're looking for. Because then, you know, you make an insect glaive that's got ice, you know, and you can use it against everything, right? It, it's not one of those things where you have an insect glaive that somehow wound up with, like, fire damage kinsect, and all of a sudden it's like, well, your kinsect doesn't even do damage anymore, let alone the little it used to, and it's also really slow. I mean, the whole point here is when you make a weapon to be able to use it against any monster, right? Pretty much. I mean, obviously, the elemental weakness corresponds to each one weapon you're using, but still, you need to stick with that, right? So this makes definitely one that's really universal, um, and... It, seems to work out the best, you know, a absolutely, if you think about it, it makes sense, so go ahead, go forth, make all the insect glaives you want, um, with that sort of pattern, pattern, um, when you're using insect glaive, uh, you're gonna want to think about skills, my favorite part of Monster Hunter is obviously the different armor skills, right, um, the most important one, obviously, is mounting plus 15, mounting god is incredible, it's like a 40% chance of mounting, or increased chance of mounting, and, it's, it's easier to topple monsters. Like, when you're up there, it's so much easier. The blue bar fills up. Like, if you're going to do Insect Glaive and you don't have Mounting God, you might as well just shut your fucking 3DS off and go sit down and recontemplate your life because it, it's the sk the only skill that, like, is specific to Insect Glaive. Like, really, it is. It, it, you put Mounting God on any other weapon class, it's like, well, what the fuck do you have that on for? You're going to sit around and wait for a ledge, wait to get upswing? No. Insect Glaive, Mounting God. Other skills you're going to want are high-grade earplugs, right? Because if you're mounting a monster, you're going to want to do that anytime. And if the monster screams and you don't have high-grade earplugs, you get sent flying, okay? You don't want that to happen. Other people are relying on you to be able to mount that monster when it's screaming because they don't have high-grade earplugs most of the time, right? So they're currently vulnerable. You topple that monster, they're fine, Okay. Um, you're also going to want wind resistance low for the same reason. You jump up there and they start to fly away for a little bit of a reason. Wind resistance low is going to combat that. Now, wind resistance high, not entirely necessary because most monsters don't use wind resistance high. And if they do, it's probably flying away and you don't really need to worry about mounting it, right? You can always find it in the next area and just get that one hit when it comes down to get it again. So wind resistance low is, I think, the only necessary level of that for most monsters. Kushala Deora obviously completely different right it's a wind monster you have to have high wind high wind resistance okay also you're gonna want sharpness plus one um just because it makes it more stronger right like it, it at the end of the day it's still just in, like an attacking weapon that doesn't have any special qualifications about it. it you knock monsters over to attack things so sharpness plus one doesn't help you pierce more parts 
When you topple monsters more, you're trying to break more parts. In order to break more parts, you have to pierce them. Sharpness plus one helps with that. Alternatively, you can go with fencing, but you know that you don't do as much damage, whatever. So sharpness plus one definitely helps there. You can pair that with sharp sword if you'd like. I don't think it's necessary to do the frequency attacks for insect glaive. Uh, I feel like it'd just be easier to do speed sharpening, right? Um, another one that a lot of people, it, it's related, but they may not think about it in the way that I do, is the destroyer skill. Because like I said, you're trying to break more parts. Yes, you're trying to, dis, you know, destroyer helps with that. But here's the thing. A lot of those parts are hard to hit even when you topple the monster. Wings and backs of a cantor and stuff. Faces, because they move around all the time, right? Well, what happens when you mount a Crimson Fatalis? Where do you mount? You mount the back or the face? You mount the head. So if you have Destroyer on, and you're stabbing the shit out of the face, yeah, you're going to break that pretty fucking easily, right? Because you, you break parts when you're mounting them. So you do damage when you mount them. So Destroyer's an instant like gratification, quick, fast pass to uh, breaking parts that are difficult to reach. Um you know, e even with an insect glaive help. So definitely, if you had to pick a set, Mounting God, High Gear Plug, Sharpness Plus One, Destroyer, and Wind Resistance Low is like your go-to, like all-around general purpose glaive set. And how do you make that? I'm glad you asked. Full Helios does it. Full Helios gives you a high grade earplug, sharpness plus one, and destroyer, as well as some other bonus skills. Sure, you have to do a little bit of socketing and playing around with that, but it's fine. You can also then socket in mounting god and wind resistance low based on your talisman. All right? Resistances aren't perfect, but it is what it is. Um, you can do a mix or even work with Camellios, give some of those skills. Probably can't get the whole sharpness plus one, mounting god, and destroyer extra in there, because sharpness plus one only has four points in the Camellio set, or Mizuha, whatever it is. Um, but you do get the wind resistance, so you get the earplugs, um, and you can get some status in there. So my favorite glaive is the uh, uh, Najarala Insect Glaive, because it's got a lot of paralyze with it. It's also got white sharpness, so sharpness plus one gives it a decent hefty chunk of purple, right? Um, so the Mizuha gives that status attack up. Um, so I'm working on a, a custom set right now that's going to give all the skills somehow in the end. It's going to happen, um, excluding status crit. Uh, or something, but uh, definitely, you know, both, either of those will work for your for your purpose for the most part. Uh, and that's one thing I want to talk about too is that uh, glaives that do paralyze or you know poison any sort of status ailment uh, seem to work really well with the whole mounting technique because you mount the monster, they topple over, you get tons of hits in quick succession, right? So you get those status ailments to go ahead right away. I've been using the Paralyzed Glaive, the Nasrella Paralyzed, Paralyzed Glaive, for a while, and it, pretty much after every mount, I get a Paralyze. So it's mount, Paralyze, beat the shit out of it, mount, Paralyze, beat the shit out of it, rinse and repeat. And even if you're Paralyzing, if you have a bunch of other people there and it's Paralyzed, you can start working on your mounts already again while it's Paralyzed. You can almost keep a cycle going if you have enough people working at it, right? Even two Insect Glaive users with the same weapon like that, could probably destroy your monster. Haven't tried it yet. Gonna try it. Hopefully when I get my capture card. If anyone does it by this, after this date before me, y'all took my idea. Um, so what monsters are they good against that you're gonna want to use Insect Glaives for? Well, I already said it's monsters like Akantor or uh, Ukanlos because they're large. First off, they're easy to hit their body, right? Um, also, some of their, their backs are hard to break and they're difficult monsters, so toppling them makes it, the whole fight easier. Um, Fatalis is great because you get to mount the head, which is harder to break as it is. Uh, so you get to work on that pretty, you know, it gives it a lot easier to break those parts. You get to work on that easier. Um, monsters that like to fly a lot. Rathalos, Rathian, holy shit. I love using Insect Glaive against Rathalos. I hate what they did to him, making him fly all the time. King of the Skies, yeah, kiss my ass. You fly up there, you get the white and the red essences, you go up there, you do double attacks, I knock him down every single time he flies up before he attacks someone. It's just it's easy mode for him. So definitely, I, I swear to God, if everyone brought Insect Glaive to every Rathalos fight, I wouldn't even be mad. No, nah, we'd, we'd be tripping each other everywhere, but we, nothing would get broke, we'd be tripping everyone, but it, it, it'd be so satisfying to me to watch him fall out of the sky. All right? Um, monsters that it's probably not great to use against are smaller monsters, monsters that move around a lot because again when you jump in the air there's a lot of time 
in between when you initiate a jump, which is where the monster's at, and to where it's going to be when you come down, right? When you come down in range for your attack. Um, that's, that's the only downside with the white one is that sometimes with smaller monsters you go too high and you're just sitting up in the air for the longest time before you can come down and actually get a hit. So you have to be kind of strategic with it and really know what you're facing and how to use it. Otherwise, you're up in the air and you're just going to get hit or miss all the time. Kieran um, is a monster I definitely recommend not using it with for two reasons. One, it's small and very difficult to hit. Two, red essence is on its face. Very difficult to get. Practically makes your insect glaive useless, right? Yes, it's great when you get them out and you knock it over, sure, but bring a great sword with crit draw and do it in twice as often, okay? Um, yeah, the smaller monsters, you know, Kongalala, it, it almost isn't really a point to it. You're just going to spend your whole time tripping monsters, the or tripping other players the entire time, right? Um, I don't know. Just, you know, be smart about it. Small monsters is pretty much the ones you're going you're gonna to want to stay away from. Ketchawacha, yeah. Um, you know, Basarios, Gravios, those are those are fine, but I don't know. Just doesn't really seem much of a point, you know? Just bring something else that deals more damage, uh, consistently, stuff like that. And 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 really if it's if it's hard to get your red essence from any monster, you want to think about using a different weapon. You know, especially until you get really good at it, using the glaive, obviously. Um so that pretty much covers it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, I try to keep it as short as possible. It was pretty long, but we cover a lot of shit, right? Uh, next week, I'll have a different weapon for you. What one will it be? I don't know. You'll have to find out, right? Um, so thanks for listening. Sorry I missed last week. Not really, though. Still waiting on the capture card to actually be released, so I can't get it yet. So still waiting on that, but it, still planning on making it happen. Uh, thanks again, guys. Like, comment, rate, subscribe. Take it easy.